out of time. Mr. Dad, look over your shoulder. What up, y'all? It's your boy, Mr. Mar Sharp, Short Man Filmworks in the building. And we have another episode of the Everyday Man's Film Reviews coming to you guys today. I wasn't going to say tonight, but it's daytime, so we're going to say coming to y'all today, all right? Today, all right, we're going to go over the, uh, not go over, but we're going to be exploring the 1985 classic and y'all know me I, I all these nostalgic movies i refer to as classics which i still i still believe that this movie is a classic to this day the 1985 horror classic fright night starring um chris sarandon uh william ragsdale amanda bercy if i'm if i'm saying her last name correctly and roddy mcdowell all right so um my first introduction into this movie was back in the days and back in the days i i, I was a i was i was a little bit of a punk watching horror movies i couldn't i could not watch horror movies and, and for, the, for the sake of my life i could not watch horror movies and this came out in i think what i said 85 came out in 85 and i remember going to the movie theater with uh my mother and my brother we was um going to the duffel theater downtown brooklyn right on duffel street and this movie was playing and i was just and, and 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 I had I had built up the courage to go see this movie, and my mother and brother was like, "Yeah, go see the movie. It's not gonna be scary, you know. We're just going to this movie, and let's just go see what it, let's go see what it's about." And you know, back in the '80s, you can walk into a movie in the middle of the movie and then sit through the movie all over again. But we walked into the the middle of the movie, and this was the part where uh, Chris Sarandon's character Jerry Dandridge runs up on uh, uh, Evil Ed, and there's a part where he's telling uh evil Ed that you know you don't have to be afraid no more and he pulls out his hand and he has these real elongated vampirish type fingers and all I remember was losing my shit I screamed as loud as I could in that movie theater because that shit scared me to death you know what I mean and that's my memory of seeing Fright Night at five years old all right and I was what five, what, what, five? yeah 85 so I was five years old fast forward to uh, I want to say 19, 1990. I want to say 1990. Fast forward to 1990. Now I had grown out of my horror movie. Um, I've grown out of my horror movie scary phase. So I was at the point now to where I was like, okay, now I can watch these horror movies with no problem. And Fright Night became one of my favorite vampire movies of all time that and the lost boys even though the lost boys i really didn't consider that to be a horror movie that was more like an action-packed movie to me but fright night had more of those horror elements in it and i remembered it from watching it in 85 and being scared out of my ass and then watching it at the time when i was what 1990 so i was 10 years old and i'm talking about like i will watch this movie so much so many different scenes in this in this movie that i just love watching and as i got old and when i got older i kind of was looking at myself like, how can I be scared of this movie? You know what I'm saying? But I think at that particular time, I was so into the horror scene. Well, I don't want to say I was into the horror movies, but I had just started watching them now. So I was going back to watch a whole lot of horror movies that I didn't watch when I was younger. You know, so Fright Night was one of these movies, all right? So uh, getting to the plot of the movie, for those who have seen the movie, y'all pretty much know what the movie's about. Those who haven't seen the movie, if you haven't seen it, I advise y'all to go watch it because I'm about to spoil the hell out of this movie right now, all right? So, we start off with uh, William Ragsdale's, uh, William Rag Ragsdale's character of uh, Charlie Brewster and him and his girlfriend. Uh, I don't know if they gave her a last name. My name was Amy. I don't know if they gave her a last name in the movie. I don't think they gave her a last name in the, in the movie. But uh, we start out with them and uh, we uh, see... Charlie see his next door neighbor moving in. He's with his girl, you know, they're trying to get their little freak on or whatever. And he sees the next door neighbor moving in, but he sees the next door neighbor carrying a casket. You know, him and his him and his uh sidekick, so to say. They are uh, carrying a casket. And that kind of just piques his interest about who's this new dude moving in next door to me. And, you know, they got a they got a, a, a coffin or a casket in and they, they putting it downstairs. So turns out, you know. And you get a little, and as I as I watch it again, you get a little, you get little pieces of what's going on in this town. You know, there's a couple of murders that start springing up. You know, and uh, you know, we get to, we we get to we get to the next scene where you know now 
the next door neighbor, which is Jerry Dandridge, he starts to invite all of these females over. And as he's inviting these females over, you know, Charlie is kind of getting this perception like, yo, what's going on with all these women going over to the house? And then when they go out they go over to the house, he hears screams and he sees bodies being carried out of the house. So now he's getting suspicious. He's getting suspicious like, yo, I think I got a mass murder living next door to me until one particular night he sees... Uh, Jerry Dandridge bite the, b about to bite a woman on her neck and he's like, oh shit, I got a vampire living right next door to me, you know what I mean? So from then on, the movie starts, the movie starts picking up from there, you know, Charlie goes through this whole, uh, 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 whole routine of, 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 of being like, yo, there's a vampire living next door to me and he's trying to get everybody to believe him, he's trying, he's, he's called the cops. Uh, he's trying to get his friends to believe him that he's got this vampire living next door to him. And then he tries to enlist the aid of Peter Vincent, played by Rodney McDowell, who in the movie, Rodney McDowell is this actor by the name of, he's, he's this, Peter, when I say Rodney McDowell, Peter Vincent is this uh, host of a TV show where he hosts all of his old movies of him being a vampire killer, which Charlie really not... I, I don't want to say he's not putting the pieces together, but he's putting the pieces together like, okay, well, he's a vampire killing these movies, so now that we got a real vampire on the premises, now I need him to help me out and come kill this vampire, you know what I'm saying? So, uh, with, with that starting, start, with it starting to happen, you know, Jerry finds out, not Jerry finds, he almost say he finds out, but he knows that he has this kid next door snooping on him, and he's trying to, you know, blow his cover as being a vampire, you know, and, you know, Jerry gets him, gives him the threats, you know, tell him, hey, listen, you know, just leave it be, leave me alone, let me do my thing, and, you know, I won't have to, I won't have to kill you, pretty much, you know, so, uh, as the movie continues to go on, you know, we see that, you know, Jerry starts to terrorize his friends, you know, he's, he's turning them into, van he's turning them into vampires, and then, you know, uh, Charlie is still on this, on this mission to be like, yo, I gotta stop this guy, I gotta stop this guy, nobody believes me, so, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta make it, I gotta take it upon myself to, you know, to stop this guy. And then eventually, Peter Vincent ends up believing him because he actually sees uh, Jerry in a particular scene. He sees Jerry not casting a, a reflection in the mirror that he has. And it totally just freaks him the fuck out. You know what I mean? So, with that happening, now he's like, okay, there really is a vampire living next door to Charlie. And he, at first, really can't take it. That there's a vampire living next door to him because it's supposed to be fake. It's, it's not real. You know, he's been this act in these movies being a vampire killer. And now he's like, okay, I got this teenage kid coming to me really wanting me to kill a vampire. And <laughs> I don't think it sits well with him psychologically. And as it doesn't sit well with him psychologically, it kind of, I don't want to say it messes with him. But he kind of accepts the fact that this is actually going on in the film. You know what I mean? So with that being like. A little rough synopsis of the movie because like I said I really don't like to give too much of the movie away you know and I know I said I might I might give away some spoilers but I'm gonna leave it like that and I'm gonna let y'all go out there and go check it out if you haven't seen it so I want y'all to go out here and check out this movie all right so uh getting to uh I want I want to get to my scale yeah let's talk about the ads talk about the acting um Chris Sarandon Chris Sarandon plays Jerry Dandridge and to this day to me Jerry Dandridge is the coolest fuck is the coolest fucking vampire in the world. I think to me, I don't know, there's so many different vampire films, man. But I think for me, the reason why I always say Jerry Jerry, Jerry Dandridge is the coolest vampire, because he was just he was just smooth in this movie. And that's a credit to Chris Sarandon and his and his acting ability. He was so smooth in this movie, man. He had the way he dressed, the way he carried himself, the way he walked. He was just like I don't know, he was just like the epitome of just kind of being like this ladies man who he could seduce him and then once he seduce him, he can get what he want, you know what I mean? So Chris Rainer was just a cool ass, cool ass dude in this movie, you know what I mean? And he kind of reprised the role, it not reprised the role, but he had a role in a remake, which the remake, uh, the remake was alright, but you know, he, he appeared in that movie too and that kind of, that kind of made me a little bit excited. It made me a little bit excited because I'm like, oh, they put him in the movie again, but he ain't really too. He ain't really have too much burn in the movie, you know what I mean? So anyway, uh, Chris Sarandon being Jerry Dandridge, uh, William. I can't get these names. I'm getting tongue tied to all these names, but Jerry Dandridge and William William Ragsdale. He plays Charlie Brewster, and he plays the teenager that actually sees 
uh, 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 what Jerry Dandridge is all about. You know what I mean? He's the one that's trying to shut him down and stop him throughout the whole film. William Ragsdale did a good job. I think he he played a very believable. Um, he played. He he looked a little bit older than a teenager. You know, because I knew, I remember when I used to watch this movie when I was younger. I always used to think that uh, Charlie Bruce was like in his twenties because he looked like he was in his twenties. He didn't look like he was like sixteen or seventeen years old, even though that was what they was pushing it to be for him to be a teenager. But he just didn't look as young. You know what I mean? So I always thought he was like a a, a, a older like an older dude, but um. I liked what William William Ragsdale did with the character of him being this paranoid guy or this paranoid teenager who has this vampire living next to him and he's trying to convince everybody of what's going on and nobody wants to believe him until, you know, ultimately it's too it's too late. Until they get, you know, until they get fucked up and they get bit. You know what I mean? But um <laughs> uh I liked what he did with the character. Um Yeah, I think, you know, for me, I for me, he played it well, and yeah, for me, he played it well. I, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna, um, I'm not gonna, you know, shit on him. You know what I mean? He did, he did very well. Amanda Burst, Bursey, is it Bursey or Burst? I always say Bursey because our last, last name is spelled B E A R S E, so I always say Bursey. And she's known as uh, Marcy from Married with Children, but I think this is what like one of her first, one of her first movie roles. I don't know if it was her first role in the film, but um. You know, it's late, it's not late, it's early in her career, you know what I mean? And she plays uh, Charlie's girlfriend, Amy, and she's one of them friends that don't really realize that Charlie has a vampire living next door to him. And she's, from the first sight of her seeing Jerry Dandridge, she's already smitten by him already. He eventually ends up getting her, ends up turning her into a vampire as well, you know? And then we have, um, oh man, what's my man's name who played Evil Ed? Because he was in another movie called uh, 976 Evil. Oh, God. I can't think of his name. I think his name is Stephen Jeffries, I believe. I think his name is Stephen Jeffries. You know what I mean? And he does a bang-up job playing playing Evil Ed. You know, when he when he actually uh, gets turned into a vampire, he has some of the most comedic performances in the movie. You know what I mean? A lot of his stuff that I've seen on the screen, he made me laugh a lot of times when i seen him on... Um, when I seen him do, uh, when I seen him play the role, you know what I mean. So I credit him for him doing what he did uh, with, with the film, and I enjoyed his performance as well. As well. And then you have uh, Roddy, Roddy McDowell who plays uh, Peter Vincent, you know. And Roddy uh, uh, Roddy McDowell, he's more of the seasoned veteran. He's more of the seasoned actor being on the um, on, on 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 the screen, and you can see it come across because with him being Peter Vincent, of him being this actor. Who's the fearless vampire? Who's the, you know the fearless Peter Vincent? He's the fearless vampire killer. And then when he actually has this in front of his face, you can see a lot of his shock, a lot of his uh, 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 confusion, a lot of his fear come out of him. And I think Roddy McDowell did an awesome job being uh, playing Peter. I always say being did an awesome job playing Peter Vincent. So I enjoyed this film, man. I enjoyed this film. So on a uh, on a scale. I give this movie, well, hold on, hold on. I ain't gonna get to the scale yet because I, I still some stuff I didn't finish talking about. Uh, the direction, it was directed by Tom Holland, not the Tom Holland that plays Spider-Man in in, 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 the, in the most recent movies. You know, Tom Holland is a whole lot younger than the director in this movie. This was 85. He actually wrote it and directed. And I think it was a, um, I think it was a great story, man. I think it was a good story of it being believable. You know what I mean? If you had a vampire living next door to you, how would you react? You know what I mean? So I think the story alone was a good premise of the story. It was a good premise of, of, of a story of just having this, this young teenage boy seeing everything that's going down in, in next door in his house. And how, like I said, how would you react? How would you react if you had an actual real life vampire living next door to you? How would you react? You know what I mean? So just the story alone, I love the story alone, and just the way that uh, Tom Holland directed the film. You know, I think he directed the film, and he did a very, he did a good job in his direction, you know, and I feel like a lot, it's to me, and I, I always say this with films, like, I think a lot of the choices that the actors make, have, it's kind of maybe a collaborative effort between the actor and the director, so... As I said, as I said before, I loved what Chris Sarandon did with Jerry Dandridge, and I want to give 
Chris Saran in full control and full, uh, 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 full responsibility for what he did with the role, you know. But also, you know, it could have been some stuff on Tom Holland as well, you know what I mean? And if Tom, if Tom Holland directed him to do certain things with Jerry Dandridge, I think he did a good job, you know what I mean? I like the overall look of the film. It gave me a real, um, I won't say it gave me a menacing tone, but it seemed like it's set in a real small, is set in a real small town, you know, and and pretty much all that happens is between Charlie's house and Jerry Dandridge's house. A couple of scenes in Peter Vincent's apartment and a couple of scenes at the high school, but it's it's, it's kind of centered around Charlie and uh and uh, uh, uh Jerry Jerry Dandridge's house. You know what I mean? So I like that part about the film. And um, the music was done by Brad Fidel. Y'all know I love Brad Fidel because he did the uh, the movie, the, the movie. He did the music, the score for uh, Terminator, Terminator 1 and Terminator 2. And Brad Fidel does not disappoint with this, with this film. You know, he has a certain tone with this movie. And when you hear that music, when you hear that Fright Night music, there's a certain theme that he plays with Jerry Dandridge. And when you hear that music, you know, Brad, Brad Fidel just know Brad Fidel just knows what how to hit his marks. Like certain scenes, like when when Jerry Dandridge is about to bite, when he's about to bite somebody on the neck, he has a certain time when the music just comes up. It comes up to his main point, and then when he bites, the music drops. You know, and it comes like oh, it's it's. I don't want to say it's hard to describe, but it's just it's just wonderful, man. I think Brad Fidel is a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful movie scorer. You know, what I mean, if if I'm if I'm saying that correctly, man, but. In all the films that I know Brad Fidel to do, he hits the mark every single time, you know. And this this movie is is, is no exception, you know. Makeup effects, uh, man, I don't know who did the makeup effects. I should have looked that shit up. Come on, man, get your get your shit together, ma. You know, but um, the makeup effects is awesome too. And this is back in the eighties. This is back in uh, eighty five. So there wasn't no heavy wasn't no heavy CGI. You know what I mean? Everything everything was practical. You know, with a lot of cuts. With, with you know, with a lot of cuts and a lot of the makeup effects, you know, it's it's amazing. It's, it's amazing. You know, there's a, there's a couple of scenes. There's a scene where uh, Charlie finally sees Jerry Dandridge in full uh, vampire transformation. You know, he sticks a he sticks a pistol through his hand, and Jerry Dandridge goes off screen, and you see when you know you see Charlie Brewster getting his getting his shit together, trying to get himself together, and then they cut to his hand, and you see his hand turn turn like this. And then he flips it, and when he flips it, you see them long fingers with the with the pencil in his hand, and he pulls the pencil out, and then the camera backs up, and you see Jerry Dandridge in full vampire makeup. You know what I mean? And then when you see him in full vampire makeup, there's another, and then you see him in full vampire makeup, and you're like, oh, okay, that's what he looks like. And then his mother goes to knock on the door, and she's knocking on the door trying to get in, and then just with the quick cuts, he's in full vampire mode. And then he cut. They cut to Charlie, and then you cut back to uh, they, they, you cut back to Jerry Dandridge, and he's kind of like in between. He's not full vampire, but he's not Jerry Dandridge. So you see pieces of him being Jerry. He still got the teeth. He's got the eyes or whatever. They got that scene. Then they cut back to Charlie again, and then they cut back to Jerry, and he's now he's back to being himself again. But just small little practical things like that. So much better than CGI and kind of just seeing the transformation right in front of your face. I know they did that in the, in the remake as well. And then uh, there's another scene where uh, Evil Ed, he turns into a, a, a vampire. And just same thing with the cuts. You know, it's, it, you know, he, he, he goes to Peter Vincent's apartment and he shows Peter Vincent his neck. He's got two holes right here. And then they cut the, they cut the Peter Vincent and cut back, cut back to Evil Ed. And he turns back and he, now he's got the vampire teeth. And then there's a... Uh, Oh man, so many different things in it. So many different makeup effects in this movie, man. And um, there's a scene he where, where Peter Vincent puts the cross on Evil Ed's Evil Ed's head, and it's and it stings him and like burns him. And he pulls it apart, and you can see the skin move, and you can see the skin pulled apart from his forehead to the cross. And then uh, the transformation scene with Evil Ed going from a werewolf back to a man. You know what I mean? Some of it you could tell it's a lot of uh, what's what they call it. I, I want to say it's a lot of uh, I want to they say they call it stop motion, stop mo stop motion animation, and you can see 
the, 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 that's just the time and attention and the care that goes into it. And I wish a lot of these, a lot wish a lot of these movies like this would do practical effects because I don't know, it just seems more realistic. And I guess it is more realistic because you got puppeteers and you got actual props that's making it more realistic versus you know versus CGI. But if uh, any if, if all the for all of those who have seen Fright Night and seen this transformation scene of Evil Ed going from a werewolf back to a man, that shit is amazing to me. I love. Love that scene, and I just love the practical effects. And there's so many different scenes of practical effects in this movie, you know. And I can spend a lot, of, I can spend a lot more time going through it all. But I want you guys to go check out the movie, you know what I mean? So, uh, getting to the scale, we'll get to the scale. I give Fright Night four thumbs up, and y'all already know I give it four thumbs up because of the nostalgic feel. Even though I was scared out of my ass when I first seen the movie, when I came back to watch this movie, it just became my overall. Overall favorite all, all, overall favorite vampire movie of all time. Will I say it's my number one vampire movie? Ooh. I don't know, because there's so many different vampire movies out there, man. But mm, I don't know, man. I don't know. And I'm saying I don't I'm saying I don't know because there's a whole lot of other vampire movies that I do love. Like I said, I like I love Fright Night. I love, love Lost Boys. I love John, John Carpenter's Vampires that came out in 98. I, that's a vampire movie that I love, too. But, um, oh, I forgot about, uh, what's the other one that came out in the 80s? Near Dark. That was another good one, too. So, I don't know, man. I don't know, man. I think I'll put Fright Night as number one. I think I'll put Fright Night as number one. You know what I mean? Like, I, wa like, I watched it recently, and... I watched it and I'm not gonna say I didn't enjoy it, but I can I guess because I've seen it so many times, and I guess because I don't want to say it doesn't hold up. To me, it held up, but it to me it lost a little it lost a little bit of something. I don't know what, but it lost a little bit of something. And maybe because I'm getting older and I've watched it so many different times, but I got so many movies that I watch so many different times, and it it seemed like it never loses anything. You know what I mean? But Maybe, I don't know, maybe, I don't know. I can't put my finger on it, but it seemed like it lost just a little bit of something, but I still enjoyed the movie. I still, I still enjoyed the movie for, for you know, for what it's worth. So, as I said, uh, four thumbs up for Nostalgic Feel. Great story, great movie, great direction by Tom Holland. Definitely you get a four, four thumbs up for the score by Brad Fidel and four thumbs up for the makeup effects. Uh, I love the acting. I love the storyline. I loved um, I loved everything about Fright Night, man. You know, and like I said, this is another reason why it's another one of my favorite movies of all time. Once again, if they put it on the big screen, will I go see it if they put it on the big screen? I probably would. I probably would because I, I saw Terminator on the big screen, so and I've seen that 450 million times. So this is another one of them films. They happen to put it in the movie theater. Yeah, I will go see it again. I, I I would go see it again, you know. I uh I wanted to touch on the remake, but it ain't really much for me to really say about the remake. You know what I mean? It's I don't want to say it's a it's it is a real it is a rehash. You know they try to they try to change up a lot of the stuff that went on in the film, but you know when you got a nostalgic feel for a certain film and then they try to redo it over again, I don't know, man. I just kind of feel like it loses a little bit of its magic. You know what I mean? I think uh, uh Colin 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 Farrell. Colin, because I said Pharrell last time. Colin Farrell played uh, Jerry Dandridge in this film, and he had that cool factor, but nobody could beat Chris Sarandon, man. Chris Sarandon just murdered that damn uh, role. To me, you know, like I said, he's to me, he's the coolest van. He's the coolest vampire beyond, uh, uh, what's, what's my name? Uh, Keith Sutherland. And I think this is probably why I put these three movies in my top vampire movies was uh, Fright Night, Lost Boys and John Carpenter's, uh, John Carpenter's Vampires, you know what I mean? Because Jerry Jerry Dandridge is my number one vampire in the movie, and then you have uh, Kiefer, Kiefer Sutherland's Vampire. But all of them, all of them were cool in that movie. And then you have uh, I want to say his name was Valak in that movie in John Carpenter's Vampires. I want to say his name was Valak. He was another one of those vampires that I love. You know what I mean? So uh, going along, going back to the remake, just touching on the remake a little bit. You know, it's a it's a rehash. It's not the, it's not the best version of Friday Night. I mean, there's only two versions, but I will always prefer watching 85's um, Friday Night more than the remake. You know what I mean? Not to take none away from the remake, because the remake it is what it is. You know, they try to make it fresh. They try to bring something new to it, but at the same time, I'm still like, eh, let me just keep it as is. You know what I mean? Let's stay on a 1985 version and um. You know, we just we just run with that, all right? So, 
If you like this video, you know, like, comment, subscribe. Uh, going through these, uh, uh, going through these films, and we're gonna be putting out more videos as always, you know. So, once again, this is the Everyday Man's Film Reviews. I'm Mar Sharp. This is Short Man Filmworks, and I will see y'all on the next run. Y'all take care.